Hi everybody, I'm Zilla Blitz and welcome. Today we're going to do an unboxing and take a look at Almoravid, the second game in GMT Games' Levy and Campaign series. Designed by Vocal Runki, this game explores Christians versus Muslims in Iberia in 1085 to 1086 using the Levy and Campaign rule set. To start out, I'm going to say I love the color palette on this one. I, Nevsky had such a fantastic design as the first game in the series. And I think artistically, this one really stands out. The production qualities all the way through the package, I think, again, are top notch, which is great to see. Now, this is a, a three inch box, thick, hefty. We got wooden blocks, we got a lot of counters, we got a big map in here. So there's a lot to unpack and take a look at. Let's start by looking at some of the kind of the basic parameters of the game. Now, the complexity on this one is listed as a five. And I know when I when I did the Nev Nevsky unboxing, I mentioned it felt a little bit more like a six. And I think I've kind of sorted that out. I think one of the reasons why it can feel a little bit challenging at the beginning is that there are quite a few mechanics in here and kind of an approach to an operational war game that's rather unique and, and kind of unlike other thing, other games that I think I've played before. So it's more, I think, that novelty that creates the initial complexity than anything else. And once things start to click and it starts to make sense and the mechanics start to flow, I think that five is good. There's still quite a bit of detail and quite a bit of intricacy, I think, in some of the mechanics and how the game plays out. Um, but I think I think the five feels just about right for it. Now, game is listed as a solitaire uh, seven. There is no devoted solitaire mode, as there was not in the first game in the series either. But the game is very solitaire friendly and it says three to four hours for length players one to two the three to four hours of length i'm a, i i wonder if i i don't quite understand where that number comes from because there's six scenarios and those shorter scenarios feel like they would go faster uh, considerably faster than three hours and then there's a longer full campaign game that that feels like it honestly would go longer than four hours so maybe that's a, it Maybe that's to make it meaningful. I'm not really sure. But um, I, I feel like that three to four hour play length is um, um, it's probably right for the average length of the scenarios. But again, there's six scenarios in here uh, in varying lengths, and some of them are quite short, too. So let's jump in now and take a look at our insides here. Now, if you've played Nevsky, you're going to a lot of it's going to feel similar. I feel like there's a good amount of kind of overlap between the two, which is nice because that's going to significantly speed up the learning time for this game. Yet, it doesn't feel like Nevsky dressed up in different clothes. I think there's a lot of unique mechanics and a lot of the history of the time period. The game also feels a little bit larger in scope and scale. There's a lot that's different, so it's I feel like both of these games stand independently very well, even though they're using the same core rules. So let's jump in and take a look here at the rule book. Now this is 20, uh, 36 pages, and the first 24 pages are the rules, and then the back 12 pages are the six scenarios here. Rule book is a matte, basically matte color. Uh, looks good, and the thing that I do like here, just if you've played Nevsky, the second page has a summary of Almoravid changes from Nevsky. So it's it, it, this is nice, because I've played games in series, and sometimes you get halfway through the series of the second game, and you're playing it like you were supposed, you played the rule in the first game, and you don't realize there's been a change. So this is really helpful because you can kind of take a quick glance at that and get an idea for what's coming up in terms of differences. Basic core mechanics here are the same. So you're going to have, and the rule book is kind of divided up that way. You're going to have initial informational section, then it's going to branch off into section two, which talks about kind of how you set up the game. Then three uh, is the levy, and four is the campaign. And again, if you're not familiar with the Levy and Campaign series, the basic premise is that you muster your forces, you prepare for a campaign, and then you go on these 40-day campaigns. And that goes back and forth through the length of the game. That's simplifying things quite a bit because there's planning stages and a lot of other things that go on. But roughly speaking, that's what you're doing here. So the rule book looks great. Um, the scenario setup looks good. We've got six different scenarios. I would also call to your attention, if you're new to the game and new to the series, that there is is on GMT Games, and I imagine also on Board Game Geek, a beginner scenario that's even more beginner than the introductory scenario here that starts you halfway through the first turn. So you skip the levy phase in the first turn, you start with the campaign phase, and I think that helps uh, new players uh, for learning the game. So you definitely want to download that if you're new to the series in the game, and it's recommended to start with that, even though it's not included in the box here. So there is our rule book. The other nice thing about this, uh, because again, I think there's not, 
Uh, I think there's a lot of people out there that aren't very familiar. I include myself in one of them, although this is very familiar in many ways from having played Crusader Kings because it is the tutorial section for Crusader Kings 2. And so I spent a lot of time in this time period playing Crusader Kings 2 from uh, Paradox Games there. Uh, but having said that, this background book uh, can really fill you in on the history, uh, context. It just adds a lot of the flavor to the game. So definitely recommended to spend some time with this. And we'll just kind of go through some of the, the sections here. But this is just brilliant in terms of enhancing play. So it starts out with kind of a strategy tips. Then we have a long example and detailed example of play, which I found um, looking at Nevsky and learning Nevsky, I felt like I almost should have started with that. This feels like it really helps to kind of uh, cement some of the mechanics and how the game flows and when I started kind of reading the rules itself it wasn't quite clicking until I branched off into kind of set up and looking at sign of some examples of play then it all really started to click for me so in addition to kind of that example of play you also get the historical context here of the geography of the region so it's going to list up all the different lords that are fighting in uh, the the campaign some the information on the Christian uh, the Christian kingdoms uh, the Lord histories are here uh, some history of the background. So just a ton of background that you can kind of pick up and really help yourself wrap around uh, the context of the game. And here is the campaign history, the actual history of the campaign. And lastly, a very nice part here. It starts on page 47. Again, this is 68 pages, so a ton of stuff to look through. Uh, are the the tips and hints and explanations for the Arts of War cards. So the Arts of War cards have both events and capabilities on them, events on the top and capabilities on the bottom, and this kind of explains what the cards are doing, how they work, and some tips and kind of history behind each card, which is fantastic because that's really kind of, I think, how you really develop a lot of, it, it seems to me that's the way you develop a lot of skill at the game, is kind of extending off to really understanding how the uh, events and capabilities and those arts of war cards work. Um, lastly, we have a card list there too. Now, let's take a look at the map. This map is bigger uh, by a third, by 50% bigger, actually, than the Nevsky map. The Nevsky map was 22 by 17. This one here is 22 by 25 and a half. So uh, a lot larger here. And I'll open this up, but I'm going to show a full-scale photo of this because this is definitely not the way you show a 22 by 25 inch map. But beautiful color. And we can see at the northern, the northwestern part, we've got Lyon, the Christian kingdoms, and then the Muslim taifas down here in the southeast corner of the board. Beautiful campaign, very different terrain, very different weather, a lot of differences here compared to Nevsky, which of course is at the other corner of medieval Europe. So beautiful map, I'm going to show some close-ups here. We've got again the waterways and the, the pathway, the roads, it just, yeah, this is just, and it just draws you right into the game, looks really fantastic. Top-notch production qualities. Side note, um, I did, I've got quite a few GMT games in the past year. This is the first time I had an issue one. There is a, a bump and a notch and a gouge in the back of the map. It looks like it must have got dropped in packaging or something like that. Kudos, I reached out to GMT and I said, hey, I've got this issue with the map. And they said they're gonna send the new one out right away. So kudos to GMT for, for taking care of that. I know stuff happens, no big deal, but it was great. Cause it's, so, it's such a beautiful game that even though it's, it's like a two inch gouge and it's like, okay, I can play with it, but I think it's gonna get weaker over time. But they just said, nope, no problem. We're gonna replace that for you. So kudos to GMT for um, stepping up and, and replacing the map. And I expect that'll probably come in a little bit here. Let's take a look at some of the player aids now. So here we have a type of politics card. We've got a player aid there and then an orientation map. So just kind of the basics of how the map is set up here. As with Nevsky, we have these player screens. You can play the game in two ways. You can use these screens to kind of hide your Lord mats and the basic kind of composition of your forces to make it a little bit uh, less predictable in terms of what you're going up in combat. And these uh, mat, these screens here are what you can use to do that. There are two of those. Again, the artwork here is just spectacular. I, I mean, it's... Yeah, it just draws you right in. You know, certain games I think are designed to just say they make you want to play them. Uh, you just that's the way you look at them. They just look fun and look challenging, and I'm very excited to dig into this one. We have two seat. We have two uh, identical player aids as well. These includes various information on the commands. We have various information on forces, strongholds, battle, and storm commands. Uh, and again, this is kind of an example. It does get. I don't, I don't think, fiddly is not the right word, right? Fiddly isn't the right word because I don't feel like it's that at all. I think the rules are very well detailed and very well set up, but it gives you a lot of different ways to play. And, and it feels like there's a lot of different subtleties 
to the different mechanics that are in the game. You know, the way you're going to pull off a siege, the way you're going to um, start combat, the way you're going to build up your decks for your different campaigns, how you levy and how you musty. I think muster. I think there's a lot to learn here. But it doesn't feel burdensome in terms of the gameplay. It never gets to be, from my impressions, it never gets to be too much. And basically, I'm kind of at the point now where I'm kind of playing a learning game of Nevsky. And so I'm not far into it at all. I've got a lot to learn about both of these games. But I will say that from what I've seen so far, it uh, it feels like it strikes that the balance on the right side, on the correct side of being intricate and fun rather than fiddly and cumbersome. So really looking forward to exploring both of these games and then future games in the series. And we have a sequence of play card here too. Uh, again, those two are identical, one for each player. Now we have three counter sets here. And I think with this one, so with Nevsky, you had the option of using kind of half inch counters for your troops, or I'll pull these out now, using wooden blocks for the troops. And it looks like here, unless I'm mistaken, they've only gone with the wooden blocks for the troops because these half inch counters, they feel like th these are all markers. These aren't necessarily military forces. So it looks like your only option now for this game is blocks. And I know there was one person that posted on my uh, unboxing of, some people don't like blocks, right? Um, and they posted that they were thinking about maybe not getting the game. But with Nevsky, you could play with counters or with the blocks. With this one, it looks like you've only got the block option. So all of these three counter sets, again, pre-rounded, so you don't have to clip them except for these little half inch ones here, all markers that are gonna use to help uh, Capture the flow of game and your counters, your forces again will be the wooden blocks that we'll take a look at. I'll show some close-ups of these and as we, as we go through them. So we've got ravaged markers. Again, the artwork is just beautiful here. These are the Lord markers that you put on the calendar for when their service is gonna be up. We've got victory point markers, all kinds of things in here. I mean, just really feel like you're kind of leaning into the history of the period here. And again, I love the, the color palette, it just seems perfect for Iberia. Conquered markers, taking a look at siege markers, and again, the other side for those, all two-sided here. Here we have the various transport and loot and coin markers, so carts, mules, provender, some more uh, markers. Uh, yeah, coin, everything here looks great, looks fantastic, a good set of those, and again, except for the smaller half-inch ones, they are all pre-rounded. Now here are your uh, Lord stickers. These go on the Lord counters here, and there are two sets, so you get a spare in case you screw one of them up, and uh, again, these look great. So yeah, a couple people mentioned uh, they don't like stickers uh, in the Nevsky unboxing. Uh, there's there's really only eight, 16 of them, so um, if you can tolerate 16 stickers, I would say it's a reason, you know, the stickers, by and large, probably wouldn't be a reason not to get the game if you don't like stickers. Here we have our blocks, 177 of them, according to the back of the box. Lots of different color. And then we get a second box bag here. It says, these, purp these blue pieces replace the dark purple pieces. I'm not quite sure why, or it's going to maybe, but, but it's there. So <laughs> then we have six dice. And now let's take a look at the Lord mats. These are fun. And we've got the Lord mats and the cards, the decks of cards to look at. Now I've opened these up ahead of time to kind of take a look at them here. So these are the mats where, again, as with Nevsky, the forces on the map are going to be represented by a single counter, the Lord counter. And the Lord's forces are all on these mats. And then you line these mats up against each other, basically in a battle formation to execute the battle. So you're going to have troops on these mats and that's how the, the battles are kept out. So uh, it keeps the map and keeps the board uncluttered and keeps all your troops off of that. And then you pull these together for, for medieval combat. Here we can see Yusuf, uh, a lot of them, Al Mutamid, Abu Allah. So these are the Muslim ones and the Christian ones. Pedro Ansuarez, Garcia Ordonez, uh, all of the Christian ones here. Again, beautiful color. Uh, the backs are just really nice, thick cardstock here, too. So they feel really durable and well made. Here, I'll put those off to the side. Lastly, we have our cards. Now, when I did the Nevsky embossing, I wasn't quite sure what the difference between what these command cards were. Let's take a look at them. There are four decks. So there are two Arts of War decks, and then there are two command decks. And I've since, I was confused when I did the Nevsky, Nevsky unboxing as to what the command decks were. But let's take a look at these. This must be the Muslim ones. So here we have, and there's basically three for each lord. Now these are what you use, you build it, when you build your campaigns, you put these in the specific order you want your lords to act. You've got a limited amount of them, and so you're picking to make kind of your, 
order of actions, if you would, for your lords here. And so these uh, three cards represent each lord. So it's uh, quite a good hefty amount here. Beautiful color, well done. Nice thick card sock as well. So uh, excellent production values on these. And then this card deck here is the similar command deck except for the Leonese forces. Then we have Arts of War. And again, likewise, the, uh, there is one deck for each side. So the top half here has the event, and the bottom half has the capability. And so we see Galician Revolt, Camels, lots of different variety, and kind of you can you know can't create so that each campaign doesn't play out the same. And then again, of course, in the back of the background book, you have all the tips on how to play these and what they historically stand for. Just looks like there are 26 each for these. So card deck of 52 for the two of them together. And again, good quality cardstock. They feel great. They should work out really well. And lastly, let's not forget some baggies. Nothing says I love you to a wargamer like some baggies. So thank you very much for that. That brings us to the end. If you've enjoyed this one and haven't seen our unboxing of Nevsky yet, um, you might want to check that out, but I'd be curious to hear what you think of this one. Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Have a great day.